Hi, welcome to my broadcast. Good morning, welcome to my broadcast. Built on the public roads around an artificial lake, Albert Park Circuit in Melbourne is a real technical challenge. Watch for overtakes at the end of the DRS zones into turns one. The circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal is fast and thrilling, with drivers inches away from the wall as they power out of the Sector 2 chicanes. The heavy braking zone into Turn 13 provides some fantastic passing opportunities. The Hockenheim Ring, Germany. So it's Ericsson up first, and uh, I'm going to drive on the US Grand Prix. This is because he is an IndyCar driver now, in America. Where has he gone to? There he is, Ericsson's there. Okay. So as I'm doing quite a few drivers, so uh, it'll be just a race distance of five laps. Uh, no practice, no qualifying. OK. 
Okay. Ericsson is actually the current Indy 500 champion, which is coming up at the end of May. This weekend is the other IndyCar race. It's at the same venue, but it's a different track which has actually been used in Formula One in the past. Lewis Hamilton won there at the beginning of his career. <clears throat> Okay. Welcome to So before the off Let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position with Nico Rosberg alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo and Perez, Raikkonen, Massa, Kvyat and Valtteri Bottas, Sainz, Hülkenberg, Fernando Alonso and Button, Magnussen, Grosjean, Jolien Palmer and Esteban Gutierrez, Ericsson and Verline. Felipe Nasser and Rio Harianto completes the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So no strategy, it's just five laps. This is a great game and the cars are relatively easy to drive than modern editions of F1. If I can avoid damage, I can see myself getting up the, uh, the pack. This track is also known as Cotter, Circuit of the Americas, it's in Austin, Texas. You note in those days there was 11 teams, hence 22 drivers. side of the tracks. Shouldn't get exceeded with the track limits if you hit them.
Just to say, the IndyCar this weekend, I'll be uh, tweeting out the updates on Twitter at SportyFinish2. on Saturday but not Sunday this week. to see the gaps in this game. I will try and activate the MFD button, the multi-function display button. It's on the left-hand side as it shows, L1. It's not a great race, but my target is now to put some pressure on Harry Anto. That's a little bit better. The US is going to be to put it on with the triangle. Risky this one up the hill. Right. Try him again. On his tail. game this 2016, I really like the old editions, I've got a 2017 which I'll probably be streaming on today as well, this is part of a four stream Friday, I've simply got my controller issues sorted out now which is good. What we do know is the next game will be the 2017. Than me. Come 
towards the end of the race. Two second time penalty didn't help. A great win then for the Mercedes team today. And I have to wonder, Anthony Davidson, just what set them apart from the competition here. Well, I think the track conditions just really suited their car today. Wind, track temperature, you name it. These cars come alive when the top. And here are our podium drivers today after that. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. Lewis Hamilton takes over the lead of the Drivers' Championship after an excellent result. Now then, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? Uh, it's got to be Roman Grosjean. He was in another league for me today. Really impressive. That's it for today's Grand Prix. And from Antony, it's goodbye and see you again next time. So Ericsson uh, got a two second time penalty and uh, his lap time was 150.247 so quite a way off the, off the uh, rest of them. Okay so that's the first IndyCar driver stroke F1 driver. Next is Roman Grosjean, the Frenchman. I'm just going to try and look at a, car, a race that he could drive at. Don't think the French Grand Prix was on here. But while we're here, let's just have a look at the races anyway that are on the game. So you've got Australia. Bahrain. China, which uh, hasn't been used... Shanghai for a year or so. Circuit in China has a back straight of over one Russia. For uh, Russia obvious reasons, not used the because the, the Ukraine war, Ukraine-Russian war. I will be driving on Russia today. For, I'll talk about that later. Uh, Spain, Barcelona, Catalonia circuit. The circuit. Monaco. Montreal, Canada. Azerbaijan, Baku, a recent race this season. Joining the F1 calendar in Austria, the Red Bull Ring. The Red Silverstone, Britain. Hungara Ring, Hungary. The Hungar and the Hockenheim, which is a great track. The Hockenheim Ring, Germany. Is it Hockenheim? This classic I think track it is. always features great racing, especially through the parabolic. Look forward to do that one. Belgium, one of my favourites. Italy. Singapore. Malaysia. Japan. USA we just had. Mexico. And Brazil. And Abu Dhabi, always the last one of the season. Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi is beautiful. So I'm going to find a incredible Yas so hotel like a... a technical section requires careful control out of the traction zones and two long straights provide good chances for overtaking. Track for Grosjean to drive at. Track for Grosjean to drive at. I'm just going to look up some stats. I'm just going to look up some stats. So he had 10 podiums and he picked them all up with Lotus. So he had 10 podiums and he picked them all up with Lotus. So 
So he actually got third at the 2012 Grand Prix. So we should do that. So we're on the quick race part of the uh, game. The Bahrain International Circuit in Sakir first hosted a Grosjean was driving for. What was he driving for? Driving for Haas, the American constructor. There he is. Five laps. Uh, yes, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do five laps. Again, then we're almost ready to go. Then, and this is what the starting grid so looks it's a randomized like for today's grid. race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and Nico Rosberg completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Raikkonen, Daniel Ricciardo, and Massa, Verstappen, Kvyat, Bottas, and Jensen Button, Perez, Hulkenberg, Carlos Sainz, and Alonso, Grosjean, Palmer, Esteban Gutierrez, and Pascal Wehrlein. NASA and Magnussen, Marcus Ericsson and Rio Harianto completes the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. So this is my favourite circuit. I would rather be on the right hand side than the 15th, I'm looking for a top 10 at least. I can't get across to the right hand side, which I like. I need to stay out of trouble. Bahrain is the first ever game I played, uh, first ever circuit that I played on on racing games, the 2010 game on Xbox 360. So, it's also the one I've been the most on. Oh dear me, and although I say it's a good track, there might be a safety car for that.
button ahead of me. The button's not in a good place, are you? I don't think there's run a race in IndyCar. He has been getting close to the second this season. As I said on these games before, if you're not doing very well under the back, try and improve your familiarity of the track mounts, set best, to best sectors, and crucially, fastest laps. Did think I'd do better than this.
and I'm on form. This is a good thing about this track is I can make up time. Game about this. The great thing about this game, the 2016 edition, is that you have in a battle, you can relive the, the battle, the battle between Rosberg and Hamilton. They've got very heated at times. Rosberg winning the 2016 World Championship and then the title. You name it, these cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right. Well, this is it. This is where they all want to be. Here come the top three then, out onto the podium. And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Nico Rosberg takes over the lead of the driver's championship. Okay, so next... Rather surprisingly, Rather surprisingly, three XF1 drivers, XF1 drivers Yeah, three uh, XF1 drivers have driven NASCAR. XF1 have driven NASCAR. And they are Kimi Raikkonen, Kimi Raikkonen. Jensen Buttered, Jensen Button, Jensen Button, who's already driven this year, who's already driven this year. and Daniel Kvyat. So we're going to start with Raikkonen. He is the 2007 world champion. the US Grand Prix built on the public roads around an artificial lake Albert Park circuit in Melbourne is a real technical challenge so we're going to drive at the US Grand Prix because I think that was Viking's last win okay so can we Viking was with Ferrari. He was with Alfa Romeo at the end of his career. So there is uh, the now retired four time world champion Sebastian Vettel. And there's Mike and the Finn. Five laps.
Now I should be at the top of the starting grid. Remember, it's randomised again. There's no practice or qualifying on this mode. Once again, then, for some more Grand Prix action, where success and failure... With that, then, let's run through the grid order. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, with Nico Rosberg alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Verstappen, Sebastian Vettel, and Massa, Perez, Raikkonen, Holkenberg, and Valtteri Bottas, Button, Grosjean, Daniel Kvyat, and Alonso, Magnussen, Sainz, Esteban Gutierrez, and Jolian Palmer. Ericsson and Verline, Felipe Nasser and Rio Harianto completes the grid. And with light. Okay, so where am I? Left hand side. Not the worst. So. Up the hill. Stay on the left hand side. And. not a bad start a little bit untidy there definitely gonna get track limit penalties are carrying driving like this we got through though And now this is relatively an easier part of the track. Up one place, so that's good. I say we're picking this Grand Prix because this is the, I think this is the very last Grand Prix that uh, Raikkonen won. Let's say he finished with Alfa Romeo and I'm pretty certain he didn't win any Grand Prix with them. He was, when he retired, the holder of the most race starts, but I think that's been overtaken by Alonso now. It's over 100, 350 race starts, I think he had. There's definitely extra power on this engine as against the Ericsson one. I'm struggling to control it but I'm seventh so I made some place I made one place up a little bit of a gap to right uh, to it's a good track this US one next bit we're coming to is reminiscent of the S's at Silverstone Massa, so coolly robbed of the world title in 2008. Can I get past Massa here? There's no DOS. It's going to be. Yeah, I've got it back there. Well,
So, lost that position and then taking it back. So, Grosjean is behind me. We can just keep the laps clean. That's not what I wanted. Hogabas out of the race. Don't know if it's going to be a safety car. So Grosjean has taken the position from me. to avoid a penalty now. This was a pretty eventful race last year. Uh, I think uh, Hamilton gave it a good go, but lost to Verstappen. And there was a pretty horrendous crash with Alonso. So come to the end of the race, uh, I haven't made up any places, I was 8th anyway. But I did have a battle with Kvyat.
Nice lap to finish off with. Battled well against Kvyat there. <coughs> Another historic win. Anthony, what do you think made the difference here? Well, I think the track conditions just. So, as I say that, we can see the drive. So, then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Lewis Hamilton takes over the lead of the Drivers' Championship after an excellent result. Moving on to the driver of the day, then. Anthony Davidson, who would you go for? I'm going to say Carlos Sainz. It was probably one of his best drives this season, and I was thoroughly impressed. After all that excitement, it's time for a lie down, I think. Thanks for joining us and goodbye until the next Not race. particularly a quick lap there. As I say, um, sometimes driving a better car is difficult. Eighth, though, didn't lose any positions. Had a bit of a battle and uh, not too bad. Okay, so... Yes, so that's uh, Raikkonen, who has been a NASCAR driver. And we move on to Jensen Button, the 2009 world champion. Former teammate of Lewis Hamilton. Um, he is actually had one race already in uh, NASCAR this year. And he's got two more to come, and uh, I'll let you know what they are in the future. Um and so we're going to do Canada because he's had some great wins at Canada. Okay, so quick race again. There's Canada, Montreal. So he was partnering Fernando Alonso at McLaren. There he is, he was born in Somerset. Just five laps again. So again, it's uh, no practice, no qualifying, it's a randomised grid. Welcome to race day here at the circuit. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session uh, it's yesterday, a wet one as well. let's take a look at how the cars line up. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and Nico Rosberg completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Raikkonen, Sebastian Vettel, and Verstappen, Massa, Kvyat, Button, and Valtteri Bottas, Hülkenberg, Perez, Carlos Sainz, and Alonso. Grosjean, Palmer, Esteban Gutierrez, and Kevin Magnussen, Ericsson, and NASA, Pascal Verlein, and Rio Harianto completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go. So it's in the wet. We'll be on intermediates. This is going to be difficult. I'll take a finish. Wherever. However, it is one of it is one of my favourite tracks, even in the wet. So let's start off. Try and keep out of trouble. So if you're on a wet uh, circuit, come off the, don't accelerate so much.
this next bit is very difficult in all conditions. Brake really hard. Then you've got the Wall of Champions next to you. And then you can really go, even in the wet, you can get up some good speeds here. Break very early. So, could be looking at a top ten. Has no DRS, of course, the wet conditions, but I'm within touching distance of ninth place. And they've just started to struggle on the wet, so I can get in there. That's good. Now that uh, I've got through that, it's, oh, it's not. Uh, It's getting wetter because I'm struggling now on the tyres.
was a pretty good overtake at the end there. Good battle with Grosjean. Just seen him off, I think. Okay, so no time penalties, although I did get some damage on a wet uh, Montreal. That's not that bad, I don't think. Was up to seven for one stage, but let it go a little bit. Brilliant stuff from Red Bull today. What a superb victory. <clears throat> so if you don't want to see the celebration just press the X button and then if you don't want to see the podium celebration also do that take a look at the driver standings Daniel Ricardo takes over the lead of the drivers championship after that excellent result and now I'd like to ask you Anthony Davidson who was your driver of the day well it's a difficult decision for sure but I'm going to say Pascal Verline. We've been seeing his talent elsewhere for a while now, and it's good to see him making the same kind of impact in Formula One. It was great having you with us for this so. weekend. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Until next time, though, goodbye. Uh, Button did get a uh, time penalty of four seconds. There you go, that was that uh, one. That's taken him down to 19th. Let's have a look at his uh, lap times. 131.030. better than the 20, 21st and 22nd places better than Palmer ok so uh, better than uh, yeah quite a few others as well so So, the final NASCAR Stroke F1 driver. I think he had a NASCAR drive a year ago or so. Is Daniel Kvyat, the uh, Russian driver. Now, the Russian driver Kvyat is in the World Endurance Championship this year. And he should be in Le Mans. He is partnering Dorian Pin and Mirko Bortolotti in the LMP2 class, car number 63. He is also going to be driving a Lamborghini when it joins the hypercar next year. So it's going to be Kvyat, quick race again, and it's going to be the Russian Grand Prix. And he was driving for Toro Rosso. Toro Rosso is the sister, or was sorry, the sister construct team. Uh, for, Red uh, for Red Bull and it doesn't exist anymore because it got renamed it as Alpha Tauri <laughs> oh dear got the sneeze uh, yeah so let's give you
anything can happen in Formula One. And of so before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position with Nico Rosberg alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we... Didn't see what position I was there. Fifteen. It's a long time since I've done Russia, but it's quite a nice track. Key is to try and maximise. That's over. Right, okay, well, that's uh, Kivyat. We will do that another time. Got puppeted from the left, right, bang. There's a picture of him. You can see a different view there. So if you do have a crash and you want to get out of it, just simply press your circle button. And either restart the session or retire from the session, which I'm going to do. So that didn't go very well. I did think he would uh, get past the first lap. A great win then for the Red Bull team today. So here come our winning drivers today. And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Max Verstappen takes over the lead of the driver's championship after that excellent result. Now then, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? I'm going for someone who really... Okay, so next it's uh, okay, so next Formula E driver Pascal Wehrlein. He drives this year in that series. Uh, Sebastian Buremi, who's also in Formula E, is with the current World Endurance Championship holders. So that's Buremi, Hartley and Hirakawa. They will be driving in Le Mans in the number 8 Toyota GR GR10 hybrid. So, quick race again. And I haven't done this for a while. I'm looking forward to this. And it is the German Grand Prix. Actually, let's go back. Let them talk about Hockenheim. The Hockenheim Ring, Germany. This classic track always features great racing, especially through the parabolica into the hairpin, where a late overtaking move is always on the cards. So interestingly, Raikkonen has the uh, lap record. So it is going to be Verline. And he's a man of racing, doesn't exist anymore. There he is. So he's just under 30 years old. Five laps. No practice, no qualifying, a randomised grid. I would expect him to be somewhere like 15th or 16th on the grid. 
but he did get a 12 in one of those races that uh, we had before. Constructors come and go, right. drivers rise, and we're almost ready to go then. And this yes. is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and Nico Rosberg completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Ricardo, Kimi Raikkonen, and Massa, Verstappen, Perez, Kvyat, and Nico Hülkenberg, Bottas, Alonso, Carlos Sainz, and Magnussen, Grosjean, Button, Esteban Gutierrez and Jolian Palmer, NASA and Ericsson, Pascal Verlein and Rio Harianto completes the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Okay, so. They're quite wide. It's quite a wide track, it appears to be anyway. Places you can switch from left to right. This is one of the first bits. Start that again. Left-hand side.
so of course Palmer to crash out. And he's the back of me, really. behind me. So 124.5, and what I'm doing, oh, he's a lot quicker than me. And there is Ericsson.
are our podium drop. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Nico Rosberg takes over the lead of the Drivers' Championship after that excellent result. Moving on to the Driver of the Day then. Anthony Davidson, who would you go for? I'm giving Driver of the Day to Rio Harriento. He's pushed and pushed and he's found some fantastic performance. It was an absolute pleasure to watch today. After all this drama, you'd be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you... Okay, so our final driver is um, Felipe Nasser. And he drives in the IMSA series. I'll talk about that another time. Um, this stream will be coming to the end after Nasser. And then a little break. And then I'll be back with NASCAR. And then I'm going to finish with... I haven't decided yet what I'm going to finish with. Okay, so... I've never driven with this driver. But it's got to be... He's Brazilian. It's going to be the Brazilian Grand Prix. There it is, Interlagos, and uh, NASA. There you go, Sauber. Let's have a look at him. He's born in, he's born in Brasilia, and he's. 31 years old highest finish 5th and 19 Grand Prix ok Welcome along then to the final m With that then, let's run through the grid order. Nico Rosberg will start his silver arrow. Where will we be? We'll be 21st. Right hand side. Not the worst place to be. Try and get through the middle. with their penalty not a great start sometimes those booms work
to us. in hard of accent, literally. And we've got a two second time penalty. a very untidy race. Did make up a few positions before we went and whacked. Another fantastic victory for the Silver Arrows. And I have to wonder, Anthony Davidson, just what set them apart from the competition here? Well, I think the track conditions just really suited their car today. Wind, track temperature, you name it. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature. So the more easily you can keep them... So as I say that, we can see the drivers. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. Let's have a look Nico at the uh, lap times. The, lead of the, drivers no, the lap times were con comparable. And now I'd like to ask you, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? Uh, it's got to be Rio Harriento. He was in another league for me today. Really impressive stuff. There'll be plenty more... Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that stream. It's a very enjoyable race uh, game to play on. Anyway, so this uh, is coming to an end. This stream. I'm going to be back about 
11 o'clock in about 20 minutes time and um, it will be NASCAR thanks for watching catch you again bye bye